Hello guys, welcome back to Paper Whisperer. Today I'll be teaching you not a model actually, or a time lapse, or anything about paper or origami for beginners actually. It's actually quite complex. This will be part one of how I designed my models and a bit about my origami story. So, basically, first th first thing to is my origami story. You might be wondering, how did I start origami? How did I get this good at, for in only seven years? I'll tell you. It's actually a lot of YouTube and a lot of practice. I mean, I'm, you could say I was, I was obsessed. <laughs> so, just, I gotta tell you, hate to break it to you, but you're not gonna start to mind that I know I was like this on your first try. So, how did I start origami? So, I started when I was five, actually, at a fun camp. And, uh, I had a few friends who taught me how to make a, the simplest paper airplane. All you had to do was take a sheet of paper, let's use graph paper right now because it's the easiest, and let's see, and all you had to do was fold it in half, and then you unfold, then you fold it here, and here, and you fold it here, and you fold these out as the wings. Now you might be thinking, how is that a paper airplane for origami in general, if it's just that simple. And I am wonder. I was wondering the same thing these days, actually. But it does kind of fly. So, that was the first model I ever, ever, and I mean ever, made. Crazy, right? I mean, everyone has to start somewhere, right? So, I just fall from there. You know, actually, you could say I was actually doing them for only like five or four years. If you don't include paper airplanes, because I was making paper airplanes for like literally... I don't know, almost 50% of the time I made origami. So, that was pretty cool. I made it from kindergarten, the summer before kindergarten, all the way until the end of second grade when I started making real origami. If you, if you like paper airplanes and you think origami, paper airplanes are origami, I agree. Don't worry. I just said real origami is it takes this equation to paper, and that's what I'm used to now. So, sorry if I offended you. Sorry, I'm squeezing some yarn, <laughs> which I actually have a great change tutorial coming out soon. But, for knitting, actually, lol. But, Excuse me. Um, basically, I started in, it was roughly second grade when, at the end, when I started making my, when I started designing my own models. Now, it was around 2017 when I designed this model, the Squish and Spin. You can check that out on my channel. So, um, basically, what I noticed is that, so, by the way, please, 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 I've noticed that someone actually plagiarized my, that model, and it's so frustrating. So, Please help me with that and make sure that you, you don't subscribe to or, origami or simple or easy origami Yakamoga. They suck. Trust me. I do not mean to, be, I'm not trying to bully people. I'm saying that they, they sold a bunch of my models and a bunch of models from other people too. Please. I don't like them. <laughs> but uh, if that's enough about them, I don't want to do any hatred. So let's move on from that. Basically, that was the first one of my first models I designed actually. I don't have any around me right now, but I do have, but that gave me the inspiration to start, in spot, to, that inspired me to make some more, to start making more models. So, I start, I started making my own dragon, which uh, one of my friends commented, it looked like a bird, but I, I honestly agree, actually. It was my first dragon. It's completely, completely different than, and it was much simpler than this little insect I made a couple of months ago. Crazy, right? I designed it. So, and also, I believe this insect jumps. No, not really. Not really, I guess. But the point is, that's basically, um, that's basically what happened. And, um, that led me up to my, the end of my third grade year, which is going through, let's just say, some depression. And that led me to my fourth, and then my fourth grade year, which is going to fifth grade, which is around the time I got diagnosed with autism and uh, Asperger's, I should say. And I, um, ended up, um, this, and then during the pandemic, it gave me a huge boost of confidence in origami when I found out to this amazing origami channel called happyfolding.com with Lauren Origami Online. You should definitely subscribe to them. She is great at teaching these things. She actually inspired me about some copyright issues, but we'll get back to more of that in another video. So basically what I realized is that um, I can have a much more, I, I can do much more, and there's much more origami than simple models. And that completely changed how I thought of myself as an origamist. And thank you for having me along for completely changing my origami life. And I mean it mean it so um i started with a hydrangea by Shus shusa fujimoto and um that was fun 
I don't know if I have any, but you might have noticed my drinks house is actually part of my new updated paper, paper whisperer logo. So, what I know, what you might know, be wondering is, how do you go from simple models of hydrangea to super, super complex models of yourself? Well, that was phase one, my origami renaissance, or, sorry, my origami evolution, revolution, whatever you want to call it. So, um, that was, um, that ended up, um, that ended up making me inspired to design my own models. It's part two of my re origami revolution, as I like to call it. When I did first, first made the inch, eight, origami ancient dragon message, how she can be, yeah. And that was fun. I was super frustrating at first. And I didn't know the few tricks. Then I went to the Tadashi Mori's channel. And it was much better. And before I knew it, with a few helps, with the help of a few YouTube tutorials, before I knew it, I was making like 10 of them. <laughs> and I gave them away to a few friends. The only one I have right now, actually I don't have one. <laughs> but then one day, I started, I designed my first box clean model, which is actually this pretty cool jetpack. Which is which I made like sometime during the summer of the pandemic, twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one, somewhere around, somewhere in the, between the, the, those two summers, and that's really all I have to tell about my story. Besides just getting better and better from there and learning a lot from YouTube because that really helped. Mainly, you gotta believe in yourself and practice. And even when things like when you seem like you should give up, like when annoying YouTube channels make money off of your origami or crafts that you made up strongly, strictly yourself, what you can do is just try to do a hobby claim. claim I tried it, it didn't work. So yeah, thanks a lot, YouTube. But the point is, um, what I realized is that um, I ended up, um, 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 is I ended up um learning how to um how to go from a simple 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 let's say I don't know where's something simple around here oh yeah the paper airplane simple paper airplane with only three steps literally maybe a bit more depending on how you count steps to some super complex designing like this which leads me into my next part of this video how do I design my models you might be wondering well there's quite a few steps to it and I must do, usually do it in my head in a couple seconds but I'll try to explain it out in a piece of paper. So let's grab a piece of paper and we'll start doing this. Let's use, have my notepad, why not? One sec. Sorry about all the math stuff. Sorry about that. Maybe you should just grab some math whisper. Maybe. Anyways, so let me grab a pencil. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start by listing what you want the origami models to consist of. I really like my origami models to be, to look unique. So, for example, I know, and I kind of comment it combined Jeremy Schaefer's, like, humor in origami models to complexity. Like, ex for an example, um, I made an origami jetpack. It's actually more complicated than you think. The thing is, it looks pretty cool, and it actually can stand sometimes, I don't know. Or you can think about my um, jumping turkey. That one actually wasn't that bad, but um, that one's pretty funny, actually. And you'd be surprised how many action models I designed, actually. Most of my models are more like modu- not modulars, um, more just like complex models that you should- actually not that complicated, but most of my models are interesting, um, are very interesting, actually, um, and, um, they are unique in a good way, and that's why I use my method. So, start. Think about the factors, what you want to put into your model. And I'll actually start explaining how I designed this stuff, but in another video. This is part one of how I designed my models. Sorry, I'm not showing the whole thing, but I don't have much time. It's like 7, oh, 7, oh, 7 o'clock right now. And I have to start sending time with my family a bit. So I have to start working on this fast. So model. Let's say I wanted to make a paper airplane with no i'll say i was starting to work on it uh, a bird with a uh, bird with feathers so i want it to look realistic that's the most important part obviously we want it to look like a bird and most importantly feathers that's kind of the point of a feather is a bird so so first we figured that out. Now we're going to bring this. We're going to bring each thing. Take each pet factor. We can cross out realistic because we don't really need that as much as you'd think. Then, let me turn the light on actually. That might make it easier to see. One sec. Oops, never mind, never mind. 
that might did me I put it the wrong way lol okay so for real this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the feathers I'm gonna use as feathers as for skills from region 3.5 they're gonna look something like this let me zoom in actually then what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what the bird's gonna look like i'm actually gonna make this a box please so i'm gonna say box please and now we're gonna bring this into more parts we're gonna do wings the main parts Eek. and how we fit the feathers in now that I'll explain another video of how to add parts into your models. Very good details into your complex models. It may seem hard at first, but there are ways to make platforms that make that condense into feathers. So I'll explain that in another video. But if you want, if you want, so but the thing is, if you want me to design the bird feathers, let's hit a hundred subscribers to hit to do this model. But if I, let's assume I want to make a pigeon, let's say. So um, I would start sketching it out now. Just a simple sketch. I don't know, it looks really ugly, but that, let's just say, is a songbird or something. I you, Now, you actually might be wondering, how do I make such cool models, and how are they so random? You know, it's actually, most models are actually honestly designed by accident. So, usually I'm trying to design something that doesn't go well, so I end up making something else. For example, I once, I was, no, never mind, it's in the recycling, but I found it. Anyways, so, I have this lion. This very cool lion I designed, but you know what it's originally supposed to be? Grim Reaper on a horse with a spear. So, yeah. Most of these models are designed by accident. I don't even remember what the jetpack is supposed to be, but I kept changing my mind, and eventually, most of my, so unfortunately, most of my models are actually discovered by accident, which I find pretty cool. But, basically, if you want to, if you want to learn more about this, subscribe and like this video, and hope you had a gr have, are having a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye!